Hey everyone, it's Sally. Now, I'm kind of continuing on my minimalism closet tour and I thought I'd make a video for everyone that's not ready to go kind of full on minimalist, do a massive purge, get rid of your clothes, but um, I wanted to make a list of things that's a little bit kind of more gentle and easier way to start. So I've collected like my list of seven items. I'm doing this, seven, seven items. Oh my God, I can't even count. Um, that you do not need in your closet. So I think this is a more kind of gentle way to start getting into that minimalist vibe. Number one, and that is expensive mistakes. Now we've all made them, and expensive can mean tons of different things. It means different things to different people. For some people it's a 50, a 50 euro purchase or a 50 pound purchase, $50 purchase. For some people it's a 5,000 one. It depends on kind of like the level you're working on. But it's a purchase that you spent a lot of money on and it was a mistake. You haven't worn it, it doesn't suit you, whatever the reason is, every time you see that item in your closet, you're gonna feel guilty. You're gonna feel guilty about the money you spent, you're gonna feel guilty of everything that you could have done with the money instead and you're just going to feel stupid. I know, because that's kind of like the way I felt. I have made expensive mistakes and the way to get rid of expensive mistakes is Admit the mistake, realize you've spent the money, and maybe try and recoup some of it. So um, I tend to sell um, expensive mistakes either on eBay or better yet, this year. Uh, I'll put a link below. Uh, that's more for kind of luxury items, and I really love their service. I'm really new to it, but it's kind of exciting. And um, if you can, get some money back from it. If not, gift it to someone who actually will enjoy it and just kind of let go of the guilt. Number two, which is so much easier, is cheap mistakes. So I have made tons and tons of cheap mistakes. Like there are those purchases that are impulse purchases and you haven't really thought about it, but you see something, you grab it. It's not that expensive, so you don't need to really like think about like, do I need this item? Is this item gonna make me happy, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to think about those. But those are things that are cluttering up your closet and they're not of any value. They just make you feel miserable when you look in there. And because they're not expensive, it's most of the time items like that I just give to charity. I just take them to a charity shop and someone else, you know, might like them. The charity will get the money for it. So, and it's not something that, you know, I have paid tons for, so I don't need to recoup any money from it. Hold on, oh, my screen, screen went to uh, sleep. Number three, and this is, this is a big one for me, it might not be a big one for you. I am a comfort girl, so anything that is uncomfortable, clothes or shoes wise, I know I will not wear. Now, I love beautiful shoes, I love them, but if they are in any way uncomfortable, I don't wear them. I'll like prance around in the store, buy them, and then come home and go, oh, God, like, I can't wear them. And I, I don't want to leave the house with all, a whole host of like blister plasters and stuff like that. And know that, okay, so I can only take a taxi. I can't do this, I can't do that because the shoes won't get me there. Or clothes that are, that I have to fidget in, that I have to pull down, pull up, like anything that makes me feel uncomfortable, no matter what it looks like and how fashionable it is and how much I like the look of them, I'm not gonna wear, and when I wear them, I feel miserable. And again, the same applies, if they were expensive, sell it, if they're cheap, give it to charity. So, number four, things that are too big or too small. Now, all of us probably have the, a pair of jeans that we, you know, we really wanna get into, like that is that one pair of jeans when you were 19 and you were at your slimmest and fittest and you really wanna get into. Um, or some people have a whole host of clothes uh, that, that are either too big, too small. Now, too big clothes often with people that have lost weight, they keep the too big clothes almost as in, who knows if I'll gain weight one day. Don't do that to yourself. Get rid of them. Like, they're, just get rid of them. You're not gonna gain the weight. And if you do, well, then you gotta buy new clothes. Please don't have that as a security blanket. Or if it's clothes that are too small for you now, accept the size you are. And if you wanna lose weight, great, lose weight, but don't like, at that point, reward yourself with some new clothes. You can buy them slowly. You don't need to, you know, go and get a whole wardrobe immediately. But keeping a hold of clothes that don't fit you puts you in the wrong kind of mental state. So 
out goes that clutter. Clutter. Um, number five, gifts and sentimentals. Now, this was for personally, for me, the most expensive thing, especially if it's gifts that were given to me by my mom or like a really close friend, um, ex-boyfriends. And my husband won't watch this, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, things that meant a lot to you at a time, but you, no, they no longer bring you joy. You don't look at them and go, oh my God, I love this and I'm gonna wear it. So I've got two ways to deal with these. Certain things, I've got one box, I've limited myself to one box. It's about, oh, yay big. And I put certain things in there that are insanely special. Like I have a dressing gown that my grandmother made me. I have a dress from, I think, 2001 that I felt incredibly amazing in. You know, a few items, not everything, just a few really curated items that I want to keep and that like really bring me joy. I won't wear them again. Um, so I kind of get them out of sight or the ones that bring you guilt those are not good gifts or sentimentals so essentially somebody gave you a gift you don't like it you never liked it but you feel like you should wear it because it'll make them happy or you should you know you just have this sense of guilt somebody spent their good money on it you should like it even if you don't um the way i deal with them this is directly from the marie kondo book is like it's a gift has served its person pur purpose when it has been given. So it's that moment, um, and afterwards, that person wouldn't want you to hold on to it if they knew you really disliked it. Um, and you can sell it, you can recycle it, you can do anything. But kind of accept the gift for what it is. Uh, it was a lovely gesture from somebody, and then move on. You don't need those feelings of guilt. Number six things that are out of fashion. So a lot of us hold on to items thinking that they're gonna come back into fashion, which is true. And if you have a big investment piece that brought you a lot of joy and still brings you a lot of joy, but you're not wearing it due to the fact that it's not in fashion, maybe you will put it in that storage box and keep it for your daughter, keep it for your goddaughter, keep it for someone or for yourself if in like 15, 20 years time, which kind of seems to be the cycle of fashion regenerating itself. You want to keep it keep it but most of the time the t by the time it comes into fashion a second time there's always a little twist to it you know and it just it doesn't I don't think it pay it's a good enough reason to keep those items in your closet for 15 years it's a long time you're looking at them you're not wearing them with the hope that it'll come back into fashion now if you have tons of storage Fair enough, like if you have a big storage space somewhere where you can get it out of sight, fine. But I don't, and a lot of people that live in big cities don't. So for me, it is kind of, it's, it's cathartic to get rid of it. And when it comes back into fashion, just buy it again. Um, and finally, number seven, uh, things that look good on someone else. I have made this mistake so many times. So things will look good on models. They are like, six foot tall, you know, <laughs> and they weigh nothing. Um, my legs are kind of short compared to them. Um, things that look good on my friends that have a completely different body type. Um, things that look good on stars. Things that look good on everybody else but yourself. And you know when you go and try it on, deep down, you know that it doesn't suit you, but you buy it anyways because it is fabulous and it looked so good. So if you just like, you kind of are transported into that world. It looks so good on that person, so it's gonna look good on me. Most of the time, if you already know, if you have an inkling in the dressing room that it's not gonna look good on you, it's not gonna look good on you and you're not gonna wear it. So all of those items that you think look good on somebody else but actually don't look good on you, give it to the friend that has that body type, you know. Give it to your tallest friend or your curviest friend or your friend that loves kind of a more boho look. Give like just pass those mistake purchases, yeah, but um, pass them around and make someone else happy. It's not going to magically, you're not going to magically 
like you know grow to be six foot tall size two it's things like that just don't ma magically happen or you're not all of a sudden going to suit that incredible like beach boho look if you live in the center of london you know what i mean it's like things aren't going to magically change so buy things that work for yourself and when you don't get rid of them and once those items like i can guarantee you if you get rid of seven items one of these you're going to feel so much better because there's so much less guilt when you look into your closet there's so much you feel freer and then it becomes easier to start getting rid of some other stuff so yeah that uh, those are my tips for starting on the path to minimalism and um let me know if you want to hear uh want to see more videos like this or if you prefer something else you know um uh, it's just something that's quite interesting to me i think i was going to I'm gonna do, uh, I've shot two different pixie hair styles uh, and I'm gonna shoot a third one, so pixie hair three different ways. I'm hoping to get that out next week. And next week I might have time to shoot another video as well. Let me know if you'd like it to be kind of like the slightly updated Twiggy makeup that I wore a couple of videos ago. Um, that's one. Or I'm also considering doing more of a vloggy video because um, I've recently quit sugar. I want to chat to you about that. There's other things going on that I'd really love to chat to you about. So let me know what kind of video you want next. Okay. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you again next week. Bye.